Hi everyone, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And uh, today we're going to talk about a, a different piece of software, and that's a piece of software called uh, Slink. Now, for many of us who are kind of the computer experts in our family, uh, we end up having to help uh, those in our family who aren't as savvy at computers on how to uh, do things on their, on their Macs when we're not sitting in front of them. So any of you that have been through that know the frustration of trying to uh, tell somebody over the phone what to do on their computer when you can't see the screen. And there are plenty of times when you want to get access to that screen and be able to just take over and, and make some things happen. And so uh, I found this great piece of software that I use uh, with my family. And like I said, the name of the software is Slink. And you can get it in the Mac App Store. Uh, if you want, it's only twelve dollars and ninety-nine cents uh, in the Mac App Store. It, it's a really an incredible deal uh, for this piece of software because it really does allow you to do remote computer management, but it also does so many uh, other things as well. If you've got a computer at home that's on that you want to have access to, you can uh, access that computer. It kind of works like screen sharing for those of you that have done back to my Mac. Uh, but the difference is, is it makes it as if you're in your uh, home network, and so all the Bonjour services that you have running, uh, such as iTunes sharing, uh, iPhoto sharing, those kinds of things, uh, will show up on, on your computer remotely as if you're in your home network. So it really is kind of a neat way uh, not only to just help family and friends with their computer needs, but also for you to be able to uh, access your own home network and have some of those Bonjour services work for you. So I'm going to show you uh, how that works. This is what it looks like on the Mac App Store. Like I said, it's only $12.99. Uh, now I've already downloaded it on my computer, but I want to show you what it looks like. You can go to uh, the actual website uh, and buy it there as well. Uh, the company's name is Slinkware. And the developer is a really great guy. He's pretty active uh, in the forums and things like that if you have issues. Uh, I found that uh, he gives really great uh, service uh, on this piece of software. So uh, you can go there and check it out, and you can just download it from there. Uh, but let me show you. Once you download the software, let me walk you through that for a second. You'll get this. Now, the reason I want to show you this is because this is a little bit unique. Uh, software wise it's not like you just install an application I gotta explain how you install this just to give you a feel for it uh, you'll notice right here uh, where it says install on on, uh, on your Macs this one is is the one that you install on the computer that's gonna uh, be the one that's gonna be the master computer or the one that will be uh, you know um, doing all of the controlling and the screen sharing and the logging in and those kinds of things so like in my case I've installed it on my uh, my MacBook Pro because that's the one I I have with me all of the time and that's the one that I want to be able to to have quick access to the other computers uh, to my uh, my dad's computer my father-in-law's computer my grandma's computer those kinds of things I want to be able to have access to those so that I can offer support and the best way for me to do that is on my MacBook Pro because it's portable so I can do it from wherever I'm at so that's where you would install this piece of software just like this right into your uh, applications folder now you'll notice there's a secondary uh, area down here that talks about installing on home Mac now what this is is this is just a little package that you would have that you would run on all of the computers you want to access so for instance if I wanted to access my computer at home I would run this piece of software on there uh, I've had my relatives that I'm uh, helping out on their computers install this on theirs so that I'm able to access those computers so that I can do uh, do you know help them and do some support on on their computers so that's where you install this this is a preference pane uh, package so it would show up in your in their system preferences and I'm going to show you how to connect uh, to those computers so that you understand what it looks like from the other side and what you need to set up first on those computers if you're going to uh, be able to access them remotely. So I'm going to go on another computer, I'm going to show you that, and then I'll come back and show you the different features that Slink has once those computers are um, already set up. Alright, so I'm uh, screen sharing now. I'm up on my computer that I want to be able to access uh, through Slink. I've already uh, clicked that little uh, box to install the Slink package uh, onto this computer that I want to access remotely. And you'll notice here in System Preferences that it says Slink Agent now right there in my uh, in my system preference pane so if I click that what happens is is I get a, a preference pane panel here that gives me a slink ID number now this number is the number that I'm going to use to be able to connect then uh, to my computer remotely now a couple of things that you notice in this pane that you've got to have ready to go uh, you've got to have remote login turned on 
all right, because you got to have the sharing preferences working for you. Um, it also has a nice area here where you can check for updates just to make sure that you've got everything up to date. And you can see here that the Slink agent uh, that automatically configures your broadband gateway to allow Slink to connect to the internet then starts to spin and starts to work there uh, to get it in place. I'm going to just click this right here to be able to authenticate to just take a look at the advanced uh, features of Slink here just so we can kind of get a feel for what that is. Now in my particular case uh, I'm running it kind of on a on a server so what it's doing is it's trying to map the external port that it needs to make it happen. And so on here you can test your connectivity to it. Uh, you've got access controls uh, that you can set up whether you want to access all of the services on this particular network or just the services provided by this Mac only. Uh, and you'll notice down below it can be allowed to have all services which includes your Bonjour services which I talked about earlier or just services provided by this, uh, this Mac itself instead of those on the local network. The nice thing is that I can access one computer on a local network. I then have access to all of the computers that are logged into that network as well if I log in remotely. So it's a really kind of a neat, uh, a neat computer and a neat service. And then, uh, you know, you can name the service as well. You can you just use a Slink's name service, which is what I do. So there are some advanced features and settings here that you can use to, uh, to configure uh, Slink on this computer. And so now that Slink Agent is done, it's all set, everything's ready to go, and I've got this number here. Uh, all I've got to do now is uh, plug this number into Slink on the computer that I'm going to use to access uh, these Macs remotely. And uh, I'll show you how to set that up and how to make that happen here uh, on the other computer. So we'll go back to that computer and I'll show you how this works in finishing off the process. Okay, now I'm back on uh, my main Mac, the one that I'm going to use to access my other computers. And uh, as you can see, if you look at the very top of the screen here, there's that little sideways S, which indicates that I have Slink running. Uh, Slink doesn't uh, have to run in your uh, dock at all. It'll run from a, a preference pane from a menu at the top. And if I just click on that, what you'll see is it'll show me here all the computers, the different computers that I have access to uh, with some of those settings. I can, I can connect to them at any time. Uh, I can also show Slink itself, which I'm going to do in a minute, and then you have your preferences, licenses, and all those kinds of things. Now, uh, let me just show Slink for and show you how you connect to a computer. And I'm just going to move this down here just so that you can uh, see it a little bit. And uh, what we're going to do now on this is I'm going to show you how you can connect to it. So to add a computer, you just hit the little plus sign here. And the Slink ID is that number that they gave us on the preference pane of the computer that we're looking at, uh, that we were looking at before. So I'm just going to type that in real quick. You can just name this whatever whatever you want it to be. So I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna name it now. If you want to keep it always connected, you can do that. I don't recommend it. it it's just as easy to pop into it whenever you need to, uh, but you can do that if you want. If you look on the Advanced tab, you can configure the address of your computer manually if you want to do that. Uh, I would just recommend leaving it alone and let Slink configure it for you, but for some of you who want more customization, you can make that happen. And I'm just going to click OK. And what happens is, is it says now it shows that there's a new computer there, uh, and it just has that information. I probably could put a, a different name on it if I wanted to, but it's got a new computer. It'll probably fill it in. Now. As it stands right here, you can see all the computers that I have access to. I'm just going to click this little green arrow here, and this is what allows you then to connect to your computer. And uh, it just talks about the fact that new computer is on my local network, so I'm not accessing it from the outside at all. Um, you know, and they're saying, hey, you really don't need Slink to connect to it, but if you want to test it out, go ahead. So let me just let me just connect in test mode. And uh, you can see it's starting to do its thing. And you notice that Growl is integ integrated with it as well. And it lets you know what's happening with Slink. But now notice all of these services now have lined up. And Slink says 59 services have been discovered on my particular uh, computer. And if you look, there's, there's access to iTunes. Uh, there's access to the different drives and things that I have on my network. Uh, there's access to uh, Plex, which Plex is a media server. Maybe I'll do a screencast on that at some other time. But you can actually access Plex remotely as if you're inside the system using it. Uh, Bonjour, you can do screen sharing uh, from here. Uh, I can even access other things that are on my network that I can just, you know, hack into if I want to. Uh, I can access Bonjour services for printers and things that I've got on my network. Uh, you know, all kinds of these services that are running I have access to. And that's kind of neat, you know, airport base stations that I might have running, uh, you know, even my uh, optical disk sharing, if I've got that going, I can share uh, a drive that's on a remote computer.
But the beauty of this now is because of this, I have access to my to my computer, and I can use the screen sharing. And what I usually do to uh, you know help family members and things like that is I just go in and I and I go to screen sharing. I click on that. Uh, I ask the ask for the password of my relatives or those that I'm trying to help. They give it to me, and then I have access to their computer, and I can take over their screen and actually uh, use their computer as if as if it was mine. So for instance, if I just uh, click this uh, screen sharing here, let me just show you kind of what that looks like. So it brings up the information, asks for a uh, username and password, which like I said, they can give you. You connect to it, and now as you see, uh, I'm back on the desktop that I had before where it shows the system uh, preference pane that we used, and now I have complete uh, control and access to my server. Uh, you know, into my computer there. So it's kind of it's kind of a neat uh, option uh, and a neat way that you can go ahead and make those things happen. Uh, once I'm in, you'll notice that I'm still on. If I want to stop the service, I can click this here. If you look across the top, it'll show all the different services, the services for Mac OS X, any iLife services I've got, which in this case is just iTunes, file access, if that's all I'm interested in, uh, access to other things, uh, the actual computer uh, stuff, more more at the root level, and then print. And so the different printer uh, options that I have on Bonjour. So it really is. It's kind of a kind of a neat package, uh, and it really is a helpful thing to get you connected. So I'm going to um, and let, let me just show. I'm going to stop the service here in a minute, but I want to show you some of the uh, different things that you can have access to when it comes to Bonjour services. Okay, to give you an idea of uh, how the Bonjour service services would work on this. Uh, I'm on my local network so it's not going to be exactly the same but you'll notice that I, I've opened uh, iTunes now uh, on, on my network on my computer and you'll notice that I have my library here which is my iTunes home sharing and then I've got another one here with an extra number on it and that's really the Bonjour number. If you were if I was away from my uh, my home or, on, or away from my network when I was recording this I'd be in, a, in another location I would still have access uh, to these Bonjour services remotely and all I would have to do to connect to it is hit this little arrow over here so let me just highlight this for a second. If I hit this little arrow, then what would happen was it would uh, it would go out, it would launch uh, iTunes, and what we would see is we would see it being connected. So let me just pull up iTunes, and you would see it connect down here under the shared area. Now, obviously, since I'm on my own home network, uh, it's already on there. It doesn't need to connect. It already knows that. But when you're working remotely you have that ability to have access to those different Bonjour services. So it's really kind of neat because in a way it assumes that your computer is in your local network. So that's one of the things that I wanted to show you with this. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disconnect now from my uh, computer and you can see now that uh, I've disconnected and, and everything's back to normal. I'm just going to close this uh, Slink window here and I just want to quickly show you uh, the uh, a couple of the other um, preferences and things that they've got. So let me just walk you through the system preferences real quick for a second so you can get a feel for that. Uh, you can set it up to launch Slink at login so that if you restart your computer it'll automatically set, set Slink up for you so that you'll have access to it whenever you need it. Uh, you can also hide it at launch if you want to do that. Um, if you look on the network uh, tab there, uh, you can get real fancy with, uh, you know, if the computer's not responding, how long should it keep trying before it disconnects, uh, the level of compression you use, those kinds of things. If you're technical and want to use those, that's great. Otherwise, you really can just leave them alone and you'll be fine. Uh, on the menu bar, you can uh, make it black and white if you want, stylistically, or you can leave it color. Uh, you can say show all the services, or you can even just kind of say, hey, I only want to see these particular services show up. There is growl support, and so you can determine what growl notifications you want uh, to show up. And then again, just under the advanced, you can put in a few other things that you want to have. If you want to have it always connected, or you, if you want to use an encrypted tunnel when you connect, there are really a lot of ways that you can set this up. Now, if when you're trying to connect, you're, you're having a problem and you don't know what's going on, it's really neat they have this connection doctor on here that you can you can click on and what will happen is it will test the end-to-end -end connection to see uh, if those computers are available and if there's a problem what's wrong with it and uh, you can see on here there's a couple of people that whose computers are on and you've got one here that uh, that outbound internet connectivity is blocked for some reason it won't work and there's a a red light there and it gives you some ideas of some things that you can try to test this to make it work including a firewall buster that maybe if someone hasn't set up their firewall right 
uh, there's a way that it, it can work with it to configure it to see if there's a way it can connect, if there's just some little thing that's off uh, on the connection. So it's really kind of a neat, uh, neat setup. It, it's really thought of a lot of the angles on it to help you really uh, have as easy uh, access to remote computers as possible. So you can see it goes, Slink goes beyond what, uh, you know, Back to My Mac does and gives you a lot more features and ability uh, to connect your computer. Well, that's all I have on uh, Slink for this week, and that's the screencast for this week. I'll be back with, uh, with more screencasts on uh, software and things to help you out, and uh, I hope this was helpful to you. And like I said, I'll be back with you to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.